All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video that I got to do with Richard Centrone. Um, I did have some technical difficulties before we got started. Like right when we were going to start, my internet was going out, my mic went out. So I, you can see me talking in the video thinking my mic's on, it's not on, and I didn't get to use my good camera, but I still think the picture looked pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video with Stuntman Batman. Definitely look him up on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description down below for his social media. And uh, enjoy the video, guys. Grab yourself a drink, some food. Enjoy. All right. Okay, guys. So I have a special guest today on the channel. Today we have Richard Citrone, a.k.a. Stuntman Batman. Right? This guy has been in dozens and dozens of movies as a stuntman and as a actor right mm -hmm. what yeah. is uh, so let's let, first off I, I we're gonna get into like your filmography i do want to get into all that but i want to get into before before you you got into the movie industry like i guess when you were a kid like what were you into growing up movie wise cartoons stuff like that well um always into cartoons when i was a kid and most of the time it revolved around uh, superheroes because i i collected comic books since I was like five years old. Batman was my favorite, but I love DC as well as Marvel. Um, I love sports, grew up playing football, hockey, uh, basketball, um, always into that stuff. So, you know, basically a nerd from, <laughs> I was a nerd from a very early age, but I just happened to, uh, just happened to be athletic too. And I liked athletics, but always, always into this stuff. I mean, just always loved it. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much from a very early, early age. I was really caught up in the superhero stuff and, and just never left me. You grew up in Pittsburgh, right? Uh-huh. Were you a George Romero fan? Yeah, definitely. You were a George Romero fan. Okay. I was yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I just recently uh, read that you, that you were born in Pittsburgh. So I was like, I wonder if he is a George Romero fan. For sure. Yeah. And yeah. That no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just gonna say that the the mall that he did um, Don in, yeah. I, I shopped there all the time growing up. Really? Yeah, yeah. The the fountain that's in there, and you know where the like the overweight zombie kind of gets killed and slips oh, into the. Over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that perfectly. I remember that whole mall. So uh, yeah, it was really cool to to see that you know because they didn't make a ton of movies in Pittsburgh, so it was really neat. The people there are really proud of uh, George Romero. Yeah, I, I want to go visit that mall because I heard they have a little memorial there for him. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, there's like a like in, somewhere in the mall. I know there's like a a big bust of of um, George Romero there. Now I, I don't know what it says on there, but there is like a little memorial that they have. That's for cool. Him. It's pretty awesome. That's um, cool. So, did you know when you were younger you wanted to get into the film business? No, I didn't start thinking about that till I got a little bit older, like my teenage, like uh, older teenage years, 17, 18. I started thinking about that. Um, no, when I was younger, I never really thought about it. I mean, California seems so far away. You know, it's way on the other side of the country. So it wasn't really something that I that I thought was even a, a legitimate dream at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you. So when you got in, you got into martial arts how, at what age? Well, I, st I started boxing at about 17. Okay. And then, because I always, just because of my own ignorance, I always shied away from martial arts because I didn't like the way they put their hands down by their hip and they threw reverse punches. You know the reverse punch, right? I never liked that. And then I was in a bookstore one time and I'd already been boxing a little bit and I saw Bruce Lee's book on, on martial arts. And I'm yeah. like, wait, this guy's a martial artist, but he's, he's holding his hands like that. I'm like, Oh, I got to look into this guy, right? Because I just thought he was an actor. I just didn't know any better, right? Yeah. And so I got really into him. We bought all the books I could on him. And then I started training martial arts on my own. Um, and I, I trained on my own for years because I just couldn't find a school that taught me the way I wanted to be taught. And I don't know if that just sounds a little odd, but I wanted somebody that was going to teach me stuff like he does. So that's the main reason I moved to California is to train under Dan Anasanto, who was his protege. Oh, and wow. used to and used to teach um, his uh, for Bruce Lee's uh, Los Angeles schools, and so that's when I had my first legitimate training in martial arts was under Dan Anasanto in 1987. It was 
So I was always into it, but I just kind of trained myself out of books and stuff, you know. Oh, but so I had, self a, you know, mm -hmm. self-taught, huh? Yeah, I had a strong desire. So I just whatever I could get my hands on, and there was no YouTube at that time. You right, know, right. trust me, if there would have been, I would have. Oh man, that'd have been awesome because you can learn. You know, you know how it is. You can learn anything on YouTube. YouTube, yeah, exactly. So it was just books, and it was videos that I could find anywhere, and just just trained all the time. You know. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so how long after that did you decide to get into the, into the film industry? Like what made you, like, what made you want to be, did you want to be a stuntman or did you want to be an actor? I wanted to be a stuntman. There was a time when I thought about acting, but mostly it was, it was stunts. Acting was kind of like, I took acting classes for about six years, mainly just to be a better performer. Cause I knew if I could act too, I would get more stunt jobs as well. But there was a time when I thought about doing acting, but man, Acting's a rough gig. I really respect anybody that's made that their career because, you know, we all know about the famous actors out there who just get jobs all the time. But when you're a struggling actor, it's a tough, tough gig, you know. So I, I, I kind of flirted with that idea for a while. And I said, nah, I, stunts is I like I enjoy stunts and it's so much easier to get stunt jobs if you're if you have ability. You know, you can get a stunt job. Right. Um, so thought about that. Um, but. Um, and done it a little bit over the years. And now that I'm older, I'm kind of going back to that. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'll get out and do a little more acting. Maybe I'll pursue that a little bit more, you know. But uh, I'm sorry, what was your original question? For the the stunt? That what yeah. got you into it? Oh, what, oh, what got, got me into it? You, yeah. know what's, you know what? I'll tell you something that really got me thinking about doing stunts. Do you remember the movie called Big Trouble in Little China? I love John Carpenter. Right? Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. So there's a scene in there with a stuntman who comes from my school and he's the first, he's like a trailblazer from my school. Now there's a ton of guys in, in stunts and in directing and acting from my, from my the martial arts Academy that I trained at. But at the time he was the first guy and his name's Jeff Amato. So he did the scene it when the girl with the green eyes is, is, is coming in a flight from the airport and those three guys go to intercept her and, and kidnap oh, yeah. her. And Jeff Amada, exactly. He's got yeah. the telescopic baton. He's got the ballet song knife. And he's yeah. doing like a six count, right? And I was like, I'd never seen anything like that. I was like, oh, my God, that is freaking amazing, you know? So that that caught my interest right there. And I've told you, because I became friends with Jeff. I told him this story. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm telling you, you influenced me so much. It's amazing, you know? And uh, so that really got the ball rolling with that, with, with thinking about moving out to California and uh, training in martial arts and then maybe eventually getting into the film industry. Which was what the big, the big one was, uh, was it three ninjas, three ninjas, right? That was my first union job. First, first right? Yeah. yeah. First union. Yeah. I had, I had three jobs to that point. I wasn't in the union yet. And I was actually a background performer, but they called it special ability because they were basically using me as a stunt performer, but they didn't want to pay me as a stunt performer. <laughs> they wanted yeah, to pay me as a background performer. Yeah. Um, but that was it. So I had three jobs doing that. And then that was my big uh, my big break as far as getting into the union was Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. Right. Yeah. Is there a favorite movie that you – well, I'll break it into two questions. What's your favorite yeah. movie that you've done stunts in and then one that you've acted in? Uh you know, a lot of my, I don't know if it's, I, I'm old now and I have a bad memory or if it's just a lot of my work, a lot of my favorite jobs have come in my fifties, believe it or not. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've been really fortunate. I've got some really great jobs. Um, you know, acting in Army of the Dead was a lot of fun. I played, you know, I played Zeus in that. And that was a lot of fun because it's challenging. You know, when you we don't have any dialogue, but you want to, because my idea was I wanted to show his humanity because he was a human at once, right, at one time, right? So it's basically um, a Captain America super serum soldier experiment that goes wrong, right? That's basically what he what he dealt with. So there, there's still humanity in him, and I wanted to bring that out in certain spots. So it was it was pretty challenging, and I really enjoyed it. And, and working with Zach, anytime I work with Zach Snyder, I'm... Um, you know, that's going to be a great job, you know, because he's he's just a great director. He's a friend and he's just he gets it. He understands the process. He loves the process. There is no 
you know, you don't see him yelling at people on his set or you don't see him stressed out on his set. He just comes to work every day happy, joking around, and he just enjoys the whole process. So I love working with him. So that was that might be one. That's one of my favorite um, acting jobs. And then by far my favorite job overall in, in stunts is uh, Batman vs Superman because that's my dream job. That's what I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. You know, be Batman, right? Be Batman. Yeah, that was that was it. That was my dream. Yeah, I I remember sitting in the theater watching Michael Keaton's Batman right back in '89. Yeah. And I hadn't gotten into stunts. This is that's about five, four or five years before I got into stunts, and just like, oh man, I wish I could do that. You know, I would. I just had ideas about the character and what I would do, and I just wanted to do it so bad, you know. And, I, and then I got older because I was fifty-four when I did Batman vs Superman, you know. So I got older. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to get it, you know. It's I probably don't have a chance at that dream. So that, but getting that was absolutely the best job of my life for sure. How did it feel to try on the suit? It, it was amazing. I mean, you know, every every kid that loves superhero, it, it, their dream. You know, it was so amazing. Um, we the first time I did, I had it on in fittings, but I never had a chance to get out and move around in it. And the first time I had a chance to do that, we we just came to Detroit to to start to start shooting, and Zach wanted to do some stills in an old factory in Detroit. And he had the Batmobile in there and he took some pictures of me, you know, by the Batmobile in front. And it was freezing cold outside. And Zach kept asking me, Richard, you okay? Are you, you too cold? I'm like, Zach, I'm, just, I'm like, I'm so psyched right now. I can't feel anything. I mean, it's just awesome. It's just, I, no, nah, dude, I'm fine. Trust me. You know, so it was, it was amazing. I, I remember looking down at my shadow and just freaking out, like just like you know, like just geeking out on like what you know, I could see the silhouette of the bat suit just looked amazing. I was it was very cool, very cool experience. Was there um us talking about Batman vs Superman? Because I absolutely love that movie. I love Zack Snyder, I love all of Zack Snyder's movies. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. I, I became a big fan of Snyder when he did Dawn of the Dead, which was I think his directorial debut, right? Yes, it was. Yep. Were, were you in that movie? Just the end, because most of it was made in Toronto, uh -huh. and um, and it was early in my in my um, in my association with Zach. So I, I I didn't know him well enough to you know have a have a situation where I would be in in a in a you know a lot of the movie. So um, but I did do the uh, the ending scene when they um, we shot it a few days in Los Angeles, where the survivors go find that island. And they dock their boat and they think, oh, man, we're away from, you know, all the infected. We're OK. Right. So they get out. They start getting out of the boat and then out, out of the woods comes all these infected, you know, running yeah. onto the dock. I was one of those guys. OK. OK. <laughs> yeah. I, I had just gotten into Romero, I think, a couple, maybe about a couple years before that movie came out, which was 2005, I think. Mm -hmm. And um I remember being really excited for Dawn of the Dead when 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 I found out they were remaking it. And I'm not a big fan of remakes. But I, to me, there's only a few remakes that have been good. And that right. one definitely was yeah. an awesome freaking film. Yeah. And it was cool because I felt like he kind of, I don't know if he went full circle, but he went back again when he did Army of the Army of the Dead. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can speak on it or not, but do you know all of all the Easter eggs in the, in the movie, right? The aliens. I know the some of them. Gods. Yeah, I know okay. some of them, and I know how they they tie together. Yeah. You do, yeah. Okay, so is is the sequel still coming? I had heard that it was. Yeah, I'd, okay. I had heard. Last I heard, they were going to do a bridge film, right? Like a short. They were yeah. gonna, that was going to bridge the first movie with the second movie. Um, but I don't know. I haven't heard in a while. I know he's. I know he's so busy with um with Rebel, Rebel Moon, right now. Um, with so I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. Are you in that one too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I I don't know if that's put on the back burner. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, as far as I know, there's still plans to do a sequel to it. Okay. I, I love that movie. That movie, like, I want to say, holds a special place in my heart because that was the first movie I watched during the pandemic when the theater started opening up again, mm -hmm. and I was just being. I just remember being so excited. Being back in the theater, smelling that popcorn, you know, the sticky floors, 
and then watching <laughs> right. a horror movie on the screen. So right. that movie does hold a special place in my heart. Um, nice. Again, a big, big Snyder fan, big, big Snyder fan. Oh, great. Uh, that Man, Man of Steel, I think is my favorite DC movie that, that he's made. And I know you were, mm -hmm. you were in that one too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His Snyder cut was an amazing movie. That's well, the Snyder cut. Did, did you do, were you in the Whedon cut? Did you mm -hmm. do, you did some stuff in that too? Yeah. That, that opening fight scene, Batman, uh, had with the parademon. Okay. And that, yeah. that was a complete reshoot, right? That was all we, that was, that was all we, that wasn't Zach at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how much you can, you know, if you want to talk about it or not, but I remember going into the theater, watching it. And I, I, I tend to know how a movie is going to be like the first few minutes of, you know, it's starting. And then when I, when I, like the first few minutes into it, I was like, Oh no, I don't think this is going to be that great of a, that great of a movie and i i was really let down mm. when i watched that that cut yeah and, um it, and it's sad because it it i it, it left like a like like a bad taste like you know after watching it like a bad taste in my mouth and mm. then i'm glad snyder got we got to see snyder's you know vision right with Snyder cut i when that when that came on because i work i work in the medical field okay so i'm always working at an urgent care during the pandemic and i stayed up Till, at, till midnight till it aired and i didn't sleep that whole night so because I, I wanted to watch the entire the entire oh, film. really yeah so wow. I, I stayed the four hours and then stayed up went to work the next day went back home watched it again that was just mm. that was just an amazing an amazing film yeah um, what is your favorite Zack snyder movie that might be it his his uh the justice league i think that's i think that's his best movie and i think that might be my favorite yeah, I think it's I think it's an amazing movie. I mean, just it's it's incredible how much better it is than the one that we got released at the theaters. It's just night and day. And then, you know, because people had asked me when that first one was released, they asked me, well, what'd you think? I'm like, it's an okay movie, but you know, for the guys kind of like that that know what it could have been, yeah. I'm disappointed because I know what it could have been. I know it was supposed to be. So I am kind of disappointed with it. And to be honest with you, I, I never really thought we'd ever see it. You know, I, I, it's amazing that that happened, you know, and it's, you know, it just shows that, you know, fans without fans, this industry is nothing really. I mean, we, we don't, we don't have jobs without the fans. And I think more people need to realize that. And um, the power of the fans in that, in that particular situation, it was amazing. I mean, that they, they, they got it done. They really did. Cause AT&T took notice. You know, AT took took notice, and they're like, "Hey, Warner Brothers, uh, get to sit down with this guy and let's see what we can do to get this get this finished." You know, which is really really cool. And that's the first time it's ever happened, like history, film history, right? As far as I know, I've never seen anything like that happen. And you know, you didn't have social media until, yeah, you know what, the last fifteen years or whatever. You know, so yeah, it was kind of almost impossible because those voices were never heard before. But now with social media. That, that made it happen, you know, so pretty amazing, pretty amazing stuff. It just shows you, you know, how, how many fans Zach has and how loyal they are. And, you know, it's pretty cool. And they're, they're trying to do another one, uh, another film that you were in, the Ayer Cut. Oh, yeah. They're I've trying to do the, release the Ayer Cut. So, um, yeah. Uh, do you know anything about that if it was supposed to be a completely different movie? I don't. I wasn't close enough to that project because I was working on another job and I was coming and going. Oh, okay. that one. So I never really got the, a good feel for what everything, how everything was supposed to be or, you know, so I have no idea. Um, I know there's some shots they did. They did of me on top of the Batmobile, on top of the Joker, Joker's car while while he's flying around the city. There's some shots that they didn't use from that. And I had heard rumors that they may end up those shots may be in there if, if they ever release that, that, that cut. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, I really don't know. And you played Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, in the first in the first movie. In the first yeah. movie. Uh, you were in Civil War? Yeah. Yeah, you? I, I doubled Vision. Vision, Paul, Paul mm -hmm. uh, Bet Bettany, right? Paul Bettany, yeah. In yeah. the, what scene was it? The, um, the, the Iron, Iron Monger? Oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's Iron, Iron Man. Um, Bettany, I doubled him for the whole movie. There was a oh, little the fight. Movie? Yeah, there was a little fight with um, 
Hawkeye that I did as Vision, and there's just some some wire work here and there, and then the airport fight. I'm up on a wire for that one. That that big fight was really cool, by the way. Just you, you know, oh my gosh, just to see all those superheroes, you know, yeah. together in one shot, you know, clashing at the at that at that site. You know, it was just really really cool. It was really really neat. Yeah, really enjoyed that job. What do your kids think? Like uh, that the fact that you know their dad is Batman and Iron Man. Well, Sage, you know, you know my son Sage. I, I do. Uh, um, he he used to go through some grief as a kid because his yeah. his friends um, would would call him a liar and you know and and he'd really take it to heart. He's like, Dad, they don't believe me. They say I'm lying. You know. And so and, and I'd give him a picture or something, you know, to take. So so his, so his friends would, you know, you know, be nice to him and, and, and believe him, you know. But uh, um, I, I don't know. I think, you know, they've I think they kind of take it for granted because it's always kind of been around. So they kind of grew up with it, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, I guess it's I guess it's OK. Besides the the problems at school, I guess it's all right. <laughs> Do you, do you um, I don't know if you're allowed to say this or not, but I don't know if you have any props from sets. Yeah, I have I have a few things. Every now and then they'll let some things go. But, you know, I can really kick myself because I did ask for one of my cows from from the oh, Batman movies. Yeah. And I was supposed to get one and they they never got me one. And and then I, I had to contact Jose, who made them, who's 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 brilliant. He made all the cows um, and and. It didn't work out there. All the mold. He had to send all the molds to London, and it was just like, yeah. oh man. So I couldn't. I didn't even get a batarang. You know, I was like, I should have at least asked for a batarang. You know, I was, I was talking to Joe Manganiello, who played um, when we were doing That's the he, right, and um, he goes, dude. He goes, I just took mine. <laughs> he goes, I took my helmet. I'm going. I'm keeping he this. You know. So yeah. So I'm like, ah, I should have done that too. I mean, what you know. What are they going to say after after all the all the movies we've done? I don't think they'd be too bent out of shape out of a losing one cow. But but um, no, I so I just have I just yeah I don't have much of anything. <laughs> I have some really cool pictures. I'm friends with the set photographer who who set me up with everything that he had from from that job. So I have a lot of really cool pictures from that job. So that's cool. At least I have that, and I have you know little things like the socks I wore when I was doing the warehouse fight, you know, but nothing major. I, w I wish I would have gotten something though. When speaking of the warehouse, do, uh, when you were filming that, did you know it was going to be as big as it was like, like the fans loving that? I think, I think, yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Um, we, we, that, that, that particular, the one particular fight in the warehouse, like the four on one fight, man, we, we rehearsed that so much. I was just telling somebody else about that the other day that, man, we, we rehearsed that for like three months before we even went to Detroit to shoot it. Like we, we all knew that fight, like the back of our hands. I mean, that, that, that whole sequence in the warehouse was so important to us, you know, cause we just, we just, you know, we just wanted to have this Batman just let loose, you know, and, and really show his skill and, and, you know, and be brutal at the same time, you know? Yeah. So, I think we all kind of thought people would like it, but you never really know. You know, you don't know for sure how people are going to respond to things. But I think, you know, I think we we had high hopes that they would at least, you know, because it yeah. wasn't it was very important to us. It was the first time you ever seen Batman on film fight like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. he never really because he was never able really to move a certain way, especially with the cowl. And he definitely mm -hmm. you know, there was just a lot of cool moves. that It was like I don't know if you ever played the Arkham games. I have. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of was was that those Arkham fights. That's what I heard. A lot of yeah. people have said that. I know they have a. It was going around on uh, on social media for a while. There was a four on one with Batman in the center from the Arkham um, video game, and then we had the same thing. And people have asked me, "Did you guys do that?" I go, "No, honestly, we didn't." You know, because I really didn't choreograph anything. I I, yeah. I I did some little changes to my performance that the stunt coordinator was okay with me doing. Um, but the choreography, you know, and as far as I know, everybody who chore chore choreographed it did not haven't played the Arkham game. So I think it was just one of those things. It was just, you know, we were on the same page somehow. You know, which was really yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I love that version of Batman. 
uh, Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I love the older, you know, angry Batman. That suit, though, I think is the best Batman suit, live action Batman yeah. suit that we've gotten. I, I agree. That's, and then that nightmare scene, because I know you did this, you were, I, I saw you in the trailer. You, you, I don't know if you, you've noticed, if you watched the trailer, you can see your face in some of the, in some of the scenes. Did you, you ever notice that? Yeah. 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 That, how was it wearing that, that whole suit? It was very heavy and very hot. Yeah. Because that's, that was, I had the bat suit on as the first layer. And then I had that heavy le leather duster over top. And then I had pants yeah. over top of that. And then, you know, scarves tied everywhere. And, and it was like, it was around 100 degrees when we shot that. And everybody was dying. It was brutal. It was really brutal conditions. Where was know, it filmed? In Detroit. Oh, it was filmed in Detroit also? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So yeah. pretty much the whole movie. Pretty much. There was a little bit in um, Albuquerque. Um, and then is there anywhere else? I think mainly there, maybe a little bit in uh, Illinois, maybe, but I, I think, but definitely mainly Detroit. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, going to not just superheroes. Do you have a favorite superhero movie? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I really like, you know, I really like the last two Avenger movies a lot. You know, Infinity Endgame, War. Infinity Endgame. War. Yeah, I really like those a lot. I, I think those are fun, fun movies. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Probably it, probably one of those. Probably one of those, I guess. In DC, um, I like I like um, Michael Keaton's Batman yeah. and uh, Batman 89. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Are you excited for The Flash? Yeah, I think that's going to be really cool. I think fans are going to probably really, really like it. I think it's uh, it's a cool idea. Like, I love the Spider-Man movie with the three Spider-Mans, oh, you know, yeah, that was and how they, well they it was well done, right? How they put them yeah. together. It's like it wasn't forced. They had oh. a really nice storyline to have them yeah. all meet, you know, really cool. I like that one, too, a lot. So, yeah, it's going to be I think Flash is going to be really good. Let me, let me ask you a quick question about that for the Flash, because Ben Affleck's in that one. Um, how come you didn't do stunts for, for that film? You know, I'm guessing, I don't know, um, but I'm guessing it was shot in London. I don't think he had much to do stunt-wise. I don't think there was much to do. There, I don't know. I have no idea, but I'm guessing there wasn't much to do. I know he's on a motorcycle, which I wouldn't have yeah. done anyhow. I can ride, but I'm not, you know, like a professional rider. So, I, you know, that's what they usually look for in those jobs. But... I'm guessing there just wasn't really much. So to the cost to fly me out there and put me up wasn't wasn't cost effective for them probably. Okay. Um, so we'll no, I don't know. We'll see when the when the movie comes out. We'll see. Yeah, but, so um, you don't know anything about it? I don't know anything. Okay. Nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. I got a uh, uh, tickets to an early screening for Monday. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's so cool. I, hope, I hope it's legit because it's it's they said it's first come first first serve. I clicked the link. I got them. Uh -huh. And it's in LA, so I'm I'm hoping. I, they say you got to be there two hours prior because otherwise, if the seats fill up, then you're not you're not going to wow. be able to. So, wow. okay. I'm really curious to see how this movie turns out. Yeah, um, that's nice. But uh, going back, to, so speaking of Marvel, how do you feel since Endgame? Like you know, because there's a there's been a little bit of a change in the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. Are you are you still a fan of the MCU? Do you think they're releasing too much? Well, it's like Star Wars. Um, whatever they put out, I'll probably see. Because I'm a lifelong fan of Star Wars. I'm a lifelong fan of comic book heroes. So I'll give them a chance, whatever they put out. I just think they have a tall order. I think I think Marvel has a tall order in front of them. I mean, they lost the franchise, you know, when Robert Downey Jr. quit. You know, they, they killed yeah. him, you know, and they can, of course, it's a comic book movie. They can bring him back anytime. Yeah. But yeah. as far as I know, he's, he doesn't have any immediate plans to, to return as the character. And, and he was the franchise, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's going to be tough to, to, to uh, equal that and, and, and rise above it as well. I think it's gonna be really tough, but uh, I'm willing to, to definitely give them, you know, you know, opportunity. Um, 
I'll definitely see the movies at some point, whether it's the theater or whether I stream them or whatever. But, them, yeah. but yeah, I'll always be interested. Like Star Wars. Star Wars is just I mean, the market's so flooded with Star Wars shows right now. Yeah. You know, that was that was one of the cool things about how Lucas did it. It's like people wanted more, you know. But I think when you get too much, you know, I think you just start getting like, ah, oh, this is a little little too much, even for Star Wars. But um, yeah, I always I always see their movies too. What's your? Uh, do you have a favorite movie that you've seen this year? This year, um, wow, uh, I don't know. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I haven't seen I haven't seen much yet. I just saw Air the other day. So did I. That, that was a good movie. Yeah. That was that was <laughs> that was really amazing. You know. Um, how you know Michael Jordan's mother had the foresight, yeah, to get that deal right? Uh, is that yeah. incredible? And to this day, he's what he makes like what 400, 400 million, I think they said, yeah, a, a year in additional salary, just as like a residual type thing for his name right. or on any Air Jordan. That is crazy. That's that is crazy. That is amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, besides that, I, I don't, I haven't seen a whole lot this year. What have you seen? Um, air, air is definitely right now my top in my uh -huh. top. Right now. Um, I I'm trying to think, I, I, I think the Batman was last year. Yeah. The Batman mm -hmm. was okay. That was like, was top gun last year. Hmm. It was either early know. this year. It might've been, I don't know. It was either early know. this year or late last year. I think it was that early was, this year. That was a great movie. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even remember liking the first one this much. Mm -hmm. Oh, John Wick. Okay. Chapter uh, Chapter Four was an awesome movie. Okay. That was a great movie. It was just nonstop action all the way through. Um, nice. I don't know. I I I watch a lot of. I watch a lot. I watch. I rewatch a lot of the same stuff over and over again. I'm a yeah, big horror guy too. Uh huh. So I have to. It's it's. Um, my wife doesn't like this, but I have to go to bed watching a horror movie. Really? Yeah. No, so that's just become your routine. So every night you, you yeah. watch. Yeah. So it was um it was Night of the Living Dead for a while. Uh -huh. And then um that I can think of on the top of my head, like the big ones I used to rewatch. That uh lately it's been Tales from the Crypt, the TV okay. show. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, it's just I don't know what it is. I, I have no idea what it is, but I have to fall asleep watching a, a horror movie. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like no. it. No, no, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, the first, after the first couple, she's like, "Oh yeah, this is okay." But then after what a month, you're, she's probably oh, she like, no. scared. She's scared. <laughs> oh, is she really? Oh, geez. Yeah, we have we, <laughs> we got a little paranormal activity in our house, so oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> I don't. It probably doesn't. But this was before I started falling asleep to the scary movies. Oh, uh, we, okay. We got a little bit of I think I think ghosts in our house, but no uh, kidding. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's wow. a little a little scary. I see you got a sideshow collectible Batman statue. Yeah, I got. I got the um, the main suit and then over the my, one. my other shoulder the armor and then there's the um there's a can you see the steppenwolf back there no hey I'll, I'll bring it closer to the to the camera oh is that iron studios yeah oh it is iron studios yeah that yeah. is nice yeah, not a lot of detail on this thing. Yeah, that's really a company cool. that's been, that's been um, uh, I, I don't know if they're fairly new, but they're getting better and better. Well, they're they're newer at at the figures and stuff, right? But that's yeah. the people that made the bat suits. What? The bat suits? Yeah, yeah. No way. That's Jose's group, yeah. So you so that's the one you tell me you know you're friends with him. Yeah. Yeah, they made the bat. They make a lot of great stuff. I think he's the best in the industry, to be honest with you. And there's a lot of good people I know, right? But I, as far as for helmets and masks, I think he's the best. He oh. his stuff is so comfortable; it's incredible. That's, that's why I was able to turn my head because he designed that. That's insane. That's insane. I yeah. had no idea because I own a lot of Iron Studios statues. Uh huh. I've been I've been buying them. I think since uh, I started buying their statues back when they when they did bvs i have a lot of the bvs ones and i own some larger ones now but i i had no idea yeah yeah that's why they're able to get the detail so good on the bvs statues because they made them 
that's, that's insane. I that's, that's pretty crazy. I, I didn't know that's that's yeah. pretty cool to know though. I, I wonder how many people actually know that though that are collectors. Probably not many. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Did did you do mocap for Steppenwolf? I did. Yeah, I did, and I did the lines too. Of course, it's not me. It's not my voice in the movie, but I did all the line, all all the lines throughout the movie for the actors. You know, so they had something to feed off of. You know. Yeah, um, my friend Carlos told me that he's like he did motion capture for for Steppenwolf. I was like, I don't know if he did, mm -hmm. and he's like, ask him. So yeah, wow, well, he's right. I did. I had no idea on that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, what? Uh, so, Sage just told me you're a comic book collector. Yeah, I, what, I, what? I used to be. Oh, okay. Do you still own some? I oh yeah, I have all my comic books from a kid when I was a kid. What I what I I stopped buying comic books in it, but I kept buying graphic novels. So I still get the graphic novels. Okay. Occasionally, I don't buy as many as I have. So many, I don't buy as many as I used to. Um, but yeah, I have. You know, I have all the you know, most of the great Batman stories and a lot of different graphic novels, DC and Marvel. But but I do have a lot of comic books from when I was, when I was a kid. Yeah. Any key issues? Um, I have some early X-Men. I don't have number one, but I have some early, like in the 20s. Oh, wow. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So you probably I, got some first appearances. Yeah, I probably do. Yeah. Um, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, number one. I know I have that. I have Novo, number one. I don't know. I don't know what I have these days. It's really worth a lot of money, but I, I, I do have quite a bit. Is um, are any of your kids into the same thing? No, collecting. No, no, right? No, Sage was Sage was never really into um, into that stuff. You know, and, and and my daughter, you know, she's in Wyoming. She lives in Wyoming, and she she was, you know, doing her her own thing. She was never really into it. But it's funny because my granddaughter, Sage's daughter, really loves the stuff that I love. Really, like I I love watching Godzilla movies. Right, oh, yeah. I got all the go I got every Godzilla movie ever made. Mm -hmm. She loves Godzilla. Sage was never into it. Right, um, Ultraman, who was like us when I was a kid. It's a Japanese show where. Um, I grew up liking Ultraman. Okay, so you know, yeah. Lila loves Ultraman. Sage was never in, but she loves it. So I think, I think maybe it, it took to get to my grandchild, but I think somebody's following in my footsteps as far as that stuff goes. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's like with me and my 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 son, and um, my I have a son um, with that's not with my wife. It's from another relationship. Uh, my wife has two kids and together we have a, a baby, okay. um, but none of them are into anything that I'm into. Mm -hmm. It's funny. They huh? Yeah. They don't <laughs> like, I collect figures. I collect comics. I collect high end collectibles. Uh, I collect movies, posters. I I'm just a collector. I I've yeah. been since I was a kid. It started, what got me collecting was star Wars. Okay. Back in, uh, back in the early nineties. Star Wars nice. is what really got me into collecting because I was a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah, so I, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that and, and Batman. So I do have a lot of Batman uh, collectibles. A lot. Yeah, I see of, the cow. Where, 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 whose cow is that that you, you have? Know what? I don't know. I, and that's the reason why I put this here. So I don't know where this – a guy a, a guy gave this to me. I don't know where he got it from, mm -hmm. but he's, he's claiming – that it was from the original mold of the BBS? I don't know. You know what? It looks like it could be. Yeah? It looks like it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you, uh, can I see inside of it? I don't know if yeah. I'll be able to see any detail with the camera. Yeah, I can't really see any detail. But it doesn't have any, um, yeah, it doesn't have any Velcro because they, they would have put that on later. That's cool. I mean, it might be. He, he might be right because it looks it looks a lot like it. Yeah, because he knows I'm a huge Batman. He gave it to me. Uh, I don't. It was a few years ago, but he he knows I'm a huge Batman fan. Do you and know what it's? Made, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Do you know what it's made of? Oh God, you're asking the wrong person. I don't know. Find don't out know what me. it's made of because if okay. it's polyurethane, you're great. You can keep it like it is. It'll be fine. If it's latex, you need to get it in an air-free environment. So you need to get it in a case or it's going to or it's going to start to uh diminish. Yeah, it'll start it'll, it'll eventually just completely disappear eventually. 
they'll break down. They'll, they'll How long does that take normally? I don't know, but you know, pro, you know, I'm sure within 20 years it'll probably be broken down. I, I, but I don't know. But I know Jose told me that himself. He said, "Yeah, the, the latex you got to keep them in an air-free environment." But that might be polyurethane. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But I, I love it. it. Uh, is it really squishy, or does it have some little bit of strength to it? It's really it's squishy up here. No, I mean if you feel like like the bottom, oh, like that. Yes. How does that? Oh, yeah. Does uh, that have some? Does that have some thickness, or is it really squishy? No, it's got some thickness, and some some air. No, it's got some thickness to it. Okay, I think it's polyurethane then. So so what so what's the difference between that and the other so one? You're good. Polyurethane will last. Okay. That's why a lot of people use it, but it's but it, but the the thing about the latex is it's much easier to turn your head in the latex. latex. Uh -huh. Yeah, I tried putting this on and it, it hurt. It yeah, hurts it does. <laughs> you you get what you got to do is you got to get two people in front of you like this. Yeah, and two people behind you like this, and they pull it like that. Oh, each pull okay. it, so it opens up and you can slide it right on your head. Yeah, I was there was one point where I was going to try to hire um, somebody who does suits. And try to do a suit for me, but I never, I never follow through with it, and I, mm -hmm. I still want to. I, and it's, you know, I, I love Keaton. Keaton's my all time, because I grew up with yeah. the Michael yeah. Keaton Batman. I, I right. remember like images watching it in theater because I think when it came out, I was, I think I was four years old when it when it came out. But mm -hmm. um, if I could ever own like a suit, it's Affleck. Mm -hmm. I love Affleck's BVS suit. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I have so much. I saw like all my collectibles is mainly it's either comic book Batman or Keaton and Affleck. So I try to get whatever I can if whatever Affleck merchandise they make. I nice. try to get. It. Nice. Yeah, just, do you do you have any of the sideshow or the Hot Toys stuff? Oh yeah, I I can let me see what I can sh right here. <laughs> oh, I'll move this to the side. I have a, a detox couple of them right here. I put them right here so because with the other camera I was using. It would have been easier to to show you, but mm -hmm. this right here, I think, is the best Hot Toys ever made, and that's the BVS one. That's cool. Yeah, I got that one. You got this. One? You got the armored one. Yeah, the armored one's me. Look at that. Look at the face. It's different. Holy crap! You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's my face. And I was telling my, I was asking my friend today. I was talking to him. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a custom Richard one. Yeah, that's that, it right there. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Why is there? A, did you have him do that or? No, oh no, I I couldn't. Ha no, yeah, I don't have that that much pull. I see that? Yeah, yeah, that's me. They um they contacted me and they said, hey, we can't get Ben's people to sign off on the armored figure. Yeah. Right. So can we do your face? Because we know you were in that you were in the oh, suit a lot, you geez. know. And I said, absolutely, feel free, you know. That okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question here because I'm a I'm a huge McFarlane fan. Uh-huh. Huge McFarlane fan. And um so there's there's like a certain there's certain people I would love to meet. I mean, you know, I don't get really starstruck for the most part. I'm a big like the people that I've met that are like I don't I'm a big rock guy. I love corn, the band corn. Okay. Uh, I, met, I met them several times, seen them in concerts. Uh, I met Stan Lee, I got to meet Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld. Um nice. But I have some people that I that are on my list that I want to meet. One of them is Zack Snyder, uh -huh. and the other one is McFarlane. Okay, those are the two people that on my bucket list of celebrities right, right. that I want to meet. Todd, I just grew up loving since I was a kid because of his Spawn. I I didn't know that he did Spider Man. I don't know. I, even though I collected his run of Spider Man, I had no idea that was him. Okay. I was I was young and I did I just loved Spawn. I you know I knew it was related because McFarlane promoted it so much and. I knew it was him and I didn't realize till years, uh, several years ago, he did Batman and, mm. and that, you know, it's two of my favorite, you know, I got spawn or Batman and McFarlane. But, um, right. anyways, uh, what I was trying to get to here. So McFarlane, they did the flash figures, right. Mm -hmm. And there's an Affleck one, but it looks nothing like Ben Affleck. Hmm. And I'm, and you know who it look, I was telling, I was telling my friend this, uh, it looks like the stunt guy, who did his stunts for the film. So, no and, and I'm wondering is, is just like what you said, because they couldn't get him to sign off. Is that a reason that it could be? You know, I'd never heard of that before they had contacted me. I never knew that that was even a possibility. They have entertained that, 
you know, so I guess it's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah, it because, is. Uh, McFarlane did the, the, the Snyder cut figures and the Affleck one looks like Ben Affleck from, from here, the eyes, everything in the cowl and the, and the tactical suit. Mm -hmm. And then when he did this one, it looks nothing like hmm. not nothing like Ben Affleck. And I was looking at pictures of a stunt man and it looks like him. Okay. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You made me think about that when you when you just mentioned that yeah. right now. Like, that yeah. is that is pretty awesome to know that that that's that's you right there. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So do you do you get excited like when you when you see it? Like oh my gosh. I, I get excited just from you know when I play a character in a film or TV and they come out with the uh with the figure. I, yeah, I, I think it's really cool. I because I you know I collect the stuff as well and and it's just fun to have your own, you know, your own stuff like that. It's just really neat, you know. Do do you collect your own like like if you're in a movie, do you buy merchandise from that movie? Yeah, I usually like a like a a figure or something like that. Like anything that Hot Toys comes out with that I did, you know, I got my yeah. Iron Man figure. I got all the suits from BVS and um, Justice League. You know. Um, they came out with some of the Star Wars characters that I played. Um, Hot Toys has, so I got those as well. Um, some of the Man actually Mandalorian characters that I played. Um, so yeah, if if they come out with something that I played, uh, Vision, I picked. You know, I was gonna say, what about Vision? Yeah, I dub, you know, from H doubling him. Yeah, I I got I picked up that one. So I yeah, I, if they come out with something, I'll definitely I'll definitely get it. Where do you keep them? But right now, a lot of them are in boxes because I'm just, I have so much. Um, but I do have some downstairs in my entryway um, where I have a, a, the Darth Vader bust, you know, yes. where you can take the helmet off and you can see yeah. his, his, his head and everything. I have that one. I have a really cool Batman that's, that's the, the, uh, the gray suit, the blue and gray. Standing really on the cool. gargoyle? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, have that. Both, I have both versions of that one. There's a Do you really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've got that. And then I've got an Ultraman one that's sick. I really like that one. Um, statue. I'm sorry? A statue? Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah. I don't know. I the only I actually own some of the vintage Ultraman figures. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I never really got into the newer stuff. Um, I haven't watched Ultraman since I was a kid, but I still have some of my vintage figures mm. kid of Ultraman. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this one came out. I saw, you know what? You know what? I'm going to turn a light on here because it's getting dark. Um, I I saw this figure at a um at a Comic-Con about a year before it was released. You know, so I took a picture of it. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get this. I gotta I gotta keep an eye on this because I always, you know, I always end up forgetting, you know. But I I I end up picking it up when it was released, and man, it's it's awesome. I can if you want, I could take a picture of it and, uh, and you know, s send it to you or have Sage send it to you. Sure, it's, sure, yeah, Love to yeah see it, it. it's cool. It's really cool. I really like it. And I have a really cool one of Batman on top of the Joker throwing punches. Oh, you know, like, that's, like uh, that's uh, Dark Knight uh, yeah. Returns Code of Bikia statue. I, I, I'm, I've been looking for one for a good price because that one kind of jumped up in price. Oh, did it really? Yeah, it's like it's kind of like a big one, right? It's like a yeah, it's about that size. White, he's got the white suit, half yep. of his body, right? Yeah, that's a my favorite interpretation of Batman is the Dark Knight Returns. That's yeah. that's why when when um, Zack Snyder was doing like the the I guess he was kind of taking a little bit from the Dark Knight Returns. That's mm -hmm. why I fell in love with that movie so much, just the, the look of um, a Batman because it's 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 my favorite Batman. Yeah. And, co yeah. and comic books and comic books. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of mine too, for sure. I, I love that story. It's a great story. Oh, the one other thing I want to tell you, I have, um, I have a Darth Vader. He's standing there, has his helmet in his hand and he's looking at his helmet and his cape is all on fire. Sideshow it, collectibles. Yeah. It's, it's cool. And I, I have a friend at Sideshow. He goes, dude, he goes, those are, those are going for a lot of money right now on eBay because they got really popular. It's um, myth mythos. Does that make sense? Is that oh yeah, I know right? what you're talking about. Yeah, mythos, it's, uh, mythos it's, Darth Vader. It's it's isn't it their own design that they did? Yeah, yeah. And I think they have a mythos Obi Wan too. They do, and a Boba Fett. Oh, they have Boba Fett too. Okay, they Boba Fett too. Yeah, yeah. That one's yeah. one of my favorites. It's it's really cool looking. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
it's nice to know that you're a collector though yeah yeah i like this stuff yeah i'm a i'm a big nerd i'll be the first to admit it have you seen uh uh the have you heard of queen studios yeah i've heard of them have you seen their their ben affleck bust the life-size no. bust oh my god i haven't gosh. seen it it looks just like him it looks does it really yeah it looks they they do an amazing job they did one of i saw it at comic con they did a tom holland bust unmasked and it okay. looks just like if you stand right next to it looks like yeah. you're standing right next to Tom that's Holland. awesome wow he's a cool kid by the way tom holland's really cool kid you know i'll, I'll be honest i uh I didn't like his Spider-Man until Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm. I after watching it, I was like, you know what? I really like Tom Holland. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of it had to do with because um, I, I I'm one of those guys that I think Spider-Man should have gotten his own movie. Mm -hmm. And he was overshadowed by by Iron Man, mm -hmm. but, which I get, which I, 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 you know, I get why they did it. But um, after watching this this movie, I, I I'm, I'm in love with Tom Holland and Spider-Man. Yeah. 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 You know, when I knew I liked him, I was, we were on um, Captain America Civil War and I was walking with an AD towards set and he was walking with a, with an AD up the direction where we came. And as we were walking by, the AD stops Tom and goes, hey, Tom, he goes, this is uh, Batman. And Tom goes, oh, you're Batman. And I go, yeah. He goes, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Spider-Man. You know, and I was like, <laughs> This kid is digging this. This kid is really yeah. into like I love that. Right then and there, I was like, oh, I like this kid. Did, you know, that was really cool. When you were on uh, working on the Marvel, did any of them know that you were Batman? Any of the actors? Yeah, Scarlet knew. Uh, Tom knew, I guess. And uh, I don't know if anybody else did. Uh, I'm not sure. But me and Sc uh, Scarlet and I had a had a con uh, conversation about Batman. She really likes Batman. And she's She's like, she kind of had an issue with some of the previous Batman, like how they fought and stuff. She goes, yeah, I just really didn't, wasn't really into it. And I go, oh, well, wait, when our movie comes out, see what you think. I think yeah. you'll like it, you know? So she's a fan, you know, that's cool. Yeah, because uh, uh, I remember both of the trailers came out around the same, around the same time, if I'm not mistaken. I think both of uh, the teaser trailer for BBS Mm -hmm. And then the first official tra uh, trailer for Civil War, I think mm. we're like close together. Makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So that so when you were talking to her about it, then the movie wasn't there. Was no obviously there was no trailer for it. No trailer or anything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was there was there any different like prototype suits for BBS? Like uh, <laughs> some like something that they thought about using, but they yeah. designed it, but they didn't use it. Yeah. Not that I know of. I didn't see it. If they have it, I didn't see it. I'm trying to remember. No, I didn't see anything other than what they used in the films. Yeah, because that was that's the first blue and gray, if I'm not mistaken, that we got in live action. I think so. Mm -hmm. Well, black and gray, not blue and gray, black and gray. Yeah, it's interesting because that gray had a little bluish to it. Oh, did it right? really? It, yeah, it wasn't pure gray. It was mostly gray. But it had a oh. little little blue highlights, maybe you could call it. You know, oh. It had a little bluish tint to it. Yeah. Was you wouldn't even know watching the movie. <laughs> yeah, I know it looks all gray. Yeah. Whoa, that's that's good to know because I, I saw the um the flash trailer and you in Affleck, uh, Ben Affleck's wearing you can see it's kind of blue. Yeah, that looks like the blue and the blue and gray suit to me. Kind of very similar. Yeah. Oh, geez. What'd you think of um the Batman. I thought it was okay. I was a little disappointed because like, I thought the movie was okay, but I thought it could have been better. I thought Patterson was a really good Batman and I thought he was a, he was a good Bruce Wayne. I like, I like Ben better as Bruce Wayne. I like Christian Bale better and I, <laughs> and I like yeah. Keaton better as Bruce Wayne, but I thought he was okay. But Batman, I thought he was really good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wasn't thrilled about the story because I, I just looked at it like if you take Batman out of that movie, it really doesn't change much, you know, because yeah. he, he never catches the Riddler. He never catches him. He really gives himself up. Yeah, he didn't right. have he didn't have the impact on the movie that I was hoping for that first new movie, this first yeah. Batman that we get to see. Um, 
I thought the Batmobile was cool. It was very simple, but I'm sure they're going to build that up as they go because, you know, this is still kind of early, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I thought that the sound that it made was really cool, like how you could oh, hear yeah. it before you could see it. Really great impact, you know, very cool. Um, I was disappointed with the fights. And I don't say that because we did the previous movies fights and like I'm all competitive. That's not it at all. I know there's awesome performers. I know a lot of them. I know they could get in there and do an amazing fight. I just think they didn't put, they didn't put a good fight together. They didn't put good fight sequence together. I think if Catman looks slicker and like a better fighter, I'm sorry, Catwoman looks slicker and a better fighter than Batman. I think you have a problem. You know, um, I know he was gritty and he didn't, and you know, he was tough and gritty, but I think because Batman studied so many martial arts, I think you need to show that you need to show some real skill there instead of just brawling. Like Superman's a brawler, right? Superman doesn't really have that type of training. He just, he has his super strength and he, he that's all he needs really. So you expect that from him, but Batman, I want to see a little more slickness, a little, you know, I don't know. I just, I was just disappointed. And I know it can be done. And I'm sure in the next one, they'll, they'll probably fix it. And they'll probably have an amazing fight. Um, but um, yeah, that one, I was disappointed with the fights. Yeah. I understand. Who, who other, I mean, I don't, is, is Ben your favorite Batman, live action Batman? Yeah, he's got to be. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that, that's kind of default for me, right? Because yeah. I was so close to the project. Right. You know, and I thought Ben was great. I mean, you can argue that Christian Bale was a better Bruce Wayne, but if he was, it wouldn't be by much. I thought Ben was a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but I, you know, yeah, I like, and Batman's the first guy that, or, or, or Ben is the first guy that had the physicality of Batman. Yeah. Ben's a big guy. Ben's about, he's a lot bigger than God, I am. We're both the same height. You know, we're both 6'3". But he was about 240 when he did that movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's Batman, right? You know, that's what you're looking at as right. Batman. And none of those none of those other actors even get near that. You know, so I think he was the most, as far as the physicality, I think he came the closest to Batman. You know, but um, like I said, I like Keaton. I like Bale. And I like Ben. I like them all as Batman. I thought they were all great Batman. The other guys, I was there, and they're okay. And Patterson, I thought was a good Batman too. Yeah, I thought I, I really liked him as Batman. I really, really liked him as Batman. Um, were Were you going to be involved in the death in the Batman solo movie with Deathstroke? Yes. Yeah, that's why I got offered because I doubled Vision and in Civil War. I got offered Infinity War and Endgame to double Vision. Oh man! And I passed on him because I wanted to be available for Ben's movie. You know, we were already, like, he was already asking me, like, who do I get to coordinate? And like, it, I, like, it looked like it was going to go, you know? Um, and then it just, just dropped out. Fell out. So I lost all three jobs. <laughs> oh man. That must've, that must've really upset him. I'm, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. The there was a lot of things going on. It, 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 he's going through tough times at that time, yeah. I think. And so That's it's true. hard to say exactly what crushed the project. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know, to be honest with you. Did you read the script? I did not have a chance to read no, the script. Okay. No, no. Curious to know how that turned, how that was going to turn out. I, I know, I, I know he he planned on having a real cool fight between you know and me and Deathstroke. Yeah. Were you and Deathstroke? <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun, man. That would have been. I, I was really looking forward to that, you know. And Ben's a great director too, so yeah, definitely. I'm sure it would have been a good movie. What's your favorite movie that he's done? Direct, direct. That, that direct. Ben's done. Yeah. Um, I think, um, the one he did about the, I can't remember the name of it right now. The one he did about the hostages. Oh, Argo. Argo. Yeah. I think that might be my favorite. Argo's He's a got a lot, a lot of good movies though. He does. You know, does. really, really good. You know, he directed air. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Right? That's why yeah. I was really excited to see that because of him, Matt Damon, Viola Davis, Chris Tucker. Mm -hmm. And of course I, 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 I've like I've liked Ben Affleck since uh, Mallrats. Hmm. Oh, nice. That's going back. Yeah, it's with Kevin Smith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's uh that's a great movie. And then uh and him in um, Armageddon. 
right i really liked him in armageddon and uh yeah i've been a fan of of, of ben affleck so that's why when they when they announced him as batman i was i was pretty excited and i know a lot of people were mad yeah but, but i was like you know what he's got that that chin mm -hmm. you know? and mm -hmm. he resembles a little bit of um batman the animated series bruce wayne he's got he that like, real strong like jaw you mm -hmm. know so and yeah everybody loved him as batman once he yeah just, yeah yeah i know he was i know he was he was very conscious you know of, of people that were getting down on him and when the project was over and everybody saw you know how good of a job he did because i think he converted most people some people are just going to not like you you know because they just are not going to like you but i think so he converted he, most people and he was really happy about that i guess i did yeah. talk to him i talked to him about that as i want to ask you this does he know or is he aware that people think he's the best batman i don't know um i think he probably is you know i think he probably i think he probably is um he knows he did a good job you know he's really proud of that work i know he's very proud of, of bbs you know he told yeah. me told me himself we talked about it when i when i first saw him for uh justice league we were talking about it and so yeah i i, I think he probably is were you at the Snyder Con? I think they called it the Snyder Con. The first, the first the, one. The first one. I saw that. Yeah. 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 First one a few years ago. This one, no, I wasn't at this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I I remember. Oh, I I a lot of people were upset and calling it a disappointment that I read on the internet because everybody mm -hmm. was expecting Snyder to start, uh, Zach to announce the future of of Justice League. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, I know a lot of people were let down, but I don't think he ever announced anything happening. No, I, I don't think so, and I don't I don't know. I haven't talked to Zach about it, so I can't really speak about it. But I, I can tell you this: he's very happy with Netflix. Yeah, and Netflix okay. is very happy with him. They have a very really nice relationship, you know. And I think Netflix is you know is, is they have no handcuffs on him they're he's doing his thing and they're very happy with it so if that means anything you know i don't know what uh rebel moon's gonna be on netflix right uh, i believe so yeah yeah it's a netflix project yeah so as far as them releasing it at theaters there may be something where they release at a you know limited a certain amount of theaters yeah limited amount of theaters but i'm not 100 percent sure is there an actor you want to meet like, like uh how do I word it? Is there an actor you haven't met yet that you would love to meet? Um, I would love to meet and work for Clint Eastwood. Oh, nice. Yeah, he, he was my favorite actor growing up. What's your favorite movie that he's done? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> there's so many. Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is tough yeah. to beat. You know, that's a really good one. Uh, Outlaw Josie Wells was sick movie. You know, he's just so good. Um, the Dirty Harry movies are, are cool. You're right. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the uh, Every Which Way But Loose. Are, they're, those are fun movies, you know, where he plays the guy that travels the country. He's a bare knuckle fighter. Yeah. Those, yeah, are, yeah, yeah. those are cool movies. Um, but probably my favorite of all his movies is Unforgiven. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good movie. I, I love that movie. I love that that scene where he comes in the town, you know, and yeah, stops yeah. Gene stops Gene Hackman mid sentence <laughs> when they see him standing at the door, yeah, you know, yeah. soaking wet because it's raining outside, you know, holding the shotgun down, and you know, it's like, oh, dude, it's just that is really really a great movie. Did you grow up since since you were in martial arts? Did you grow up liking like watching the Van Damme movies? Steven Seagal, because I know you did stunts for uh, under, uh, what is it, Fire Down Below, right? Yeah, I did a couple Seagal movies where I had a little fight sequence with him. And then I did one where I doubled. I doubled him in a movie one time. Um, um, but um, yeah, I liked I liked Seagal when I liked his movies when he first came out. And then they just yeah. kind of felt repetitive. But like um, Above the Law, I, th I think was a really fun movie. And it, and it was and he was very impressive in it. You know, his yeah. his his martial arts was really impressive because we you hadn't seen much Aikido like that in movies up to that point, you know. So I thought that was pretty cool. 
but then as they went along, they just felt like it's the same type of thing. And then, and then, you know, then I I worked with him and then you hear about his reputation for hurting stunt performers. I was going to say, I was going to ask you, is that true? Yeah, it's true. It is. (laughs) Did he hit you? Yeah. And he, (laughs) he hit me one time when we weren't even filming. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And, um, we were like, <laughs> we were, he lined us up because he's trying to pick the guys he wants to interact with in this scene. Yeah. And so he lines us all up in a line, like he's a drill sergeant. He's walking down the line, looking at each guy. And he looked at me and he looked away. And I all, I know that look, like when you're, when you, when you're, when you're in front of somebody, especially if you have a confrontation with them and they look away, you better be ready. <laughs> you're getting hit. <laughs> right so he looked away and i tightened up my gut and he turned around oh, and bang, just popped me in the gut i guess he just wanted to see you know i don't know whatever he wanted to test me is that's his oh, thing man. and he goes he goes but I, I was ready it didn't hurt yeah and he goes all right i'll use him oh okay and it goes on a line I'm, you know whatever he was doing i'm like oh god like oh, yeah so he's man. yeah but he does he does have this this habit of hurting people occasionally and another time he would have hurt really hurt me but i was i was aware of the, the distance because i used a lot of weapons and i knew he was too close to me could have hurt me there but i was i was aware of it so i i i, I compromised or I, I i i set up the distance properly where yeah. you know so i made sure i wasn't hit because if i'd have stayed where he wanted me i'd have got hit but um yeah it happens He's hurt. He's hurt some people for sure. Yeah. You still train? Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. work out regularly? Um, I do. I, I work out five days a week. Um, and I, I train probably two, sometimes three days a week, martial arts, you know, oh, at okay. least two. Yeah. So it's funny now I'm working out. I used to work out Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays when I was younger, you know, like I was your age, I was working out three days a week. Now that I'm older, a lot older, I'm working out five days a week. You know, yeah. so I just, I just figure I gotta, you know, well, there's there's a lot more knowledge now about different types of workouts and what you can get away with and what you can do and how much your body can take. Is back then, everybody's like, no, you skip a day. No, you always skip a day. You know, and then people are like, well, you do different body parts in between those days. You know, so there's all these different feelings. But now with the type of workouts I do, I don't need to skip a day. You know. And so um, I've just kept on doing that and I've never really left a workout routine. You know, I just, I just can't do it. You know, I just every now and then I feel like, you know what, when I get older, I'm going to just get lay on the couch and get fat and just eat whatever I want and, you know, and not train anymore and just live an easy life. But I don't even want to do that. You know, yeah. I, I want to do this. I want to stay in shape, you know? And so it's working out. Yeah. Yeah. The pandemic really broke me. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It really, it's ever, ever since then, it's been really hard for me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get back in the gym consistently, but since the pandemic, it's, it was, it was pretty bad. Like I, I just, I think I was stress eating. Mm. I think I was stress eating during the pandemic, but, um, um, it's, it's been, it's been tough, like to get a, get back in a routine. So what I've noticed because, um, I work two minutes, uh, by a 24 hour fitness, so on my lunch, nice. yeah. So on my lunch, I work out, mm-hmm. and I notice that I get a good workout in under an hour because I'm pushing myself. I'm doing supersets. My rest periods are shorter. So mm-hmm. ever since the pandemic until now, I I just started doing this about two two months ago. Um, I was and prior to that, I was training at night and I would go every so often. I've noticed more results doing this than training two hours a night two or three days a week. Right. Right. I don't know what what it is, but I think it's that short time that I have that really pushes me to, to go. And, and that no resting is the way to go. Yeah. You know, like my, my doctor, who's, he's a trainer, he's a rehab. He's, he's like, I'm very, very lucky to have met this guy. He got me ready for army of the dead. Cause I walk around like right now. I'm really light. I'm about 190 pounds, but I usually walk around between 195 and 200. Okay. And he got me super ripped and 210. So I was more muscular and I was very ripped and it was, it was a kettlebell exercise, like a circuit, a kettlebell circuit. Yeah. 
you know, doing, um, doing maybe about eight different exercises, 12 reps and four sets and no rest. You just go, you just go in between it. You don't rest between sets. You don't rest between reps. You just go. And I'll tell you, man, he goes, he goes, this will rip you and it'll put, it'll put more muscle on you. And he was right. He was just right. From yeah. From, from kettlebell routine. And it's, it's not, I wouldn't call it lightweight, and but it's not heavy either. It's like, it's enough that it's, it's a good, you know, it's a good workout, but I'm not like, ugh, I'm not like struggling to get six reps. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, a, it's hard, but it's not too hard. So you, you got to figure out that weight that's best for you. And then, you know, and then if it gets too easy, of course, you push yourself, you go up five pounds or whatever. So yeah, just a, ke a kettlebell routine, like about eight different exercises. You know, you work everything in there. You work legs, couple legs, couple chest, couple shoulders, back. You know, you work it all in there. And when I was training for Army of the Dead, I was doing that. I was doing that Monday through Friday, same routine, Monday through Friday. Wow. And getting up and doing that before I eat anything. I was on. I was a little bit on, like a little bit on the keto diet at that point. Right. Kind of a kind of an alternate version of that or, you know, just kind of worked it to whatever fits me best. And so before I have any breakfast or anything, I do my workout. And then I'm telling you, man, it was I, I was in great shape. I was probably more ripped for 300 when I was a Spartan, probably oh, a little more ripped, but not as muscular. So, yeah, it was, it was cool. It worked. Is that is it true that they use CGI abs in that movie? Mm -mm. OK, you heard that rumor? I've heard a lot of rumors, prosthetics. <laughs> yeah, I heard yeah. the CGI one. I don't think I heard prosthetics, but I did so, hear the CGI. Some guys needed help as far as shading with an airbrush. Yeah. Like they shade, because if you shade in between the abs where the creases are, then it pops more. Yeah. Right? So some guys got some shading, but nothing is enhanced. No, nothing. Okay. We, I mean, we all worked really hard. I mean, we were getting paid to work out every day like we were and then we'd we'd come home grab a dinner then we'd go and eat or we'd go to the gym and work out for another hour hour and a half so we were literally working out all day we were in awesome shape i mean so yeah. that was that was hard work and the actors too that was a great movie yeah it was a good one it's one of zach's best i think that's Still, that's, a, no. that's a great movie i love that movie mm -hmm. that one yeah. you know and i i remember i watched the uh, watchmen and i never really read the comics at the time so I went to the theater and watched it and I, and I was like, I don't, I don't really understand this movie. You know, I don't understand the characters. I don't know what's going on. So I kind of mm -hmm. left the theater like with like, like visually the movie was amazing, but I was like, ah, I don't know. And then I started reading some books uh, like maybe a couple years later. And then I watched the director's cut. And then I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. it's another one of Zack Snyder's like, yeah. Like, top movies for me oh yeah it's brilliant i mean that movie was floating around hollywood for a long time nobody wanted yeah. to take it on because it's if you look at the graphic novel it's a huge undertaking to do yeah. that but there's so yeah. it's so packed you know with with story and, and and information and man it's it's just there's so much to do there in the length of one movie and and but he did a really amazing job with it it's, it's a really good movie i don't i i don't know if you feel the same way but i don't think he gets the credit that he deserves no, I don't think so. And I heard there was um, my buddy told me he had heard a quote. Somebody quoted. Um, I think it was. Oh, my gosh. What's the director's name that does the Avatar movies? Famous. Uh, James Cameron. James Cameron. Yeah. My buddy told me he read a quote where James Cameron said, you know, Zack Snyder is not appreciated the way he should be. And, and one day in the future, he will be. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't so it's interesting. It. Yeah. I don't get it. He's done, he's done like visually, I mean, not only great movies, but visually like great movies. Like, I don't oh, think yeah. there's been a movie like Watchmen, right? Before that, there was like a comic book movie that was done that way. No, no. And his, his shots are incredible. I mean, yeah. he sets up a shot as nice as anybody. I mean, his shots are beautiful. You know, he's I, an art, he's an art major. So he has a great eye, you know. Oh, I didn't know he was an art major. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm a, I'm kind of a movie nerd for the most part. I, I watch the director commentaries on on the DVDs or the special features. So I'll sit there and watch the movie and just watch the director talk about the movie. And I did that with um, Dawn of the Dead. Okay. And just him just talking about just shots he does with keys and stuff. I was just like, I, I loved it. I don't know. I don't know. That's that. I think, I think, I think the guy's a genius, to be honest with you. Mm, yeah. Um, but I'm really excited for Rebel Moon. 
like I said, I don't know much about it, but it, it looks awesome. I see, I see little like teases that mm-hmm. he shows from yeah. it. So that's, that's a movie I'm, I'm pretty high for. I, I think it comes out next year. Maybe the end of this year. This year? It, okay. it, yeah, it's usually about his movies are usually about a year of post production. It might be out the end of this year, maybe, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you up all night, Richard. Um, I really appreciate you for doing this. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. No, no worries. It's not like, a what problem. Is, what is going on here? Like, it, yeah. it, I, like I said, I tested this for all day yesterday and then a little bit today and even before. We, we we went live, but um, mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate it. I got to thank your your son Sage too for for this man because he I when when I first met your son, I, this doesn't have to be in the interview. I can take it out if you want. Uh, mm-hmm. It was at the gym, and mm-hmm. I was training with one of his one of his friends, and um, he was he knew I was a big Batman fan, so I th- I think he told me along the lines is like you know his dad's Batman. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he was like, yeah, he's mm-hmm. going to be Batman in the new Batman movie. And I was like, Batman versus Superman? And he was like, yeah. And I said, no way. And I, I went up to the Sage. And mm-hmm. then he told me, and I was like, no freaking way. I, mm-hmm. I was telling, I remember telling him how excited I was for the movie. And I was like, is there anything you can tell me about the movie? And he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't remember. I, I remember asking him like a lot of things. I was like, can, is there like trying to get spoilers out of him? I don't even know if he knew, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me anything. And I was just like, no way. And then, you know, I, I don't know. I think he, he went to school. He flew, I don't know where he went. I, I didn't see him anymore at the gym after that. Okay. So yeah. um, what year was uh, that? This was, this was uh, maybe a year before BBS. So okay. I don't, I don't know. Was that 2014 BBS or yeah. 2015? Um, and I just, I didn't see him at the gym anymore. Okay. So uh, I, you know, fast forward a few years later, which is now. I, um, I was, uh, you know, this whole Zack Snyder stuff's going on, you know, the Snyder, the Snyder con and everything. And mm-hmm. I'm uh, getting back more into hot toys again. So I'm trying to buy all the Batman hot toys that, that I need to complete my collection. So I'm, I'm on a Snyder kick right now. Like I got a really cool, I don't even know if you can see it. Uh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Probably mm-hmm. not. But on top of the arcade, it's a light up LED Justice League Snyder poster. Oh, Black nice. Black. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful piece. And That's um, cool. I, yeah, and I was like, you know what? I, 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 I remember going to the gym and talking to Sage and, and you know, his dad's stuntman. And I've been following you on Instagram for I don't know how long already. Oh, and really? Was, yeah, I've been, I've, I've been following you for, I think, a couple of years, maybe three years. I don't know, because my Instagram, I've had a few Instagrams that get deleted. So, but, um, and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to his to, to Sage, but I'm like, I don't want to be that guy, you know, that says, hey, I, uh, can I talk to your dad? You know what I mean? I, I just, that's just not who I am. I don't like going up to people and saying, hey, can I? Yeah, it's just my, but my buddy who does podcasts was like, dude, you got to do it. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're a Batman fan. You're a legit fan. You're a big movie fan. You love Snyder. He was like, just reach out to his son and see if he, if there's a way you can reach out to yeah. Rich, he yeah. made it happen. I was like, Do you remember? Yeah. I was like, I don't even know if you remember me. He's like, Yeah, from the gym, right? And I was like, Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. I was like, You remember me? And I was like, I don't know if you know, if you ever really knew. I was a big Batman, I'm a big Batman collector, a big collectibles collector, a big movie buff, big. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got YouTube channel. So I was like, Is there any way I can get your dad on my channel? So, oh, cool. And so got to give him a big thanks for, <laughs> for yeah yeah I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll send it to him that, that yeah. yeah 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 but um but thank you for coming on I really You're welcome. appreciate it uh, oh, no problem hopefully one day we can do this again maybe yeah yeah, yeah let we'll me know comes out yeah, yeah maybe after that's released yeah I could talk yeah, a lot more about it okay all right Richard well thank you okay have a good night You're welcome Raphael Stay safe and thank uh you. we'll see you soon oh thank you for telling me about that that uh oh yeah right there that bat that armored batman yeah, that's you're awesome. Welcome. And then you're same welcome. with the Iron Studios doing the uh, the suits. That's 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 crazy. I, that's I didn't pretty, know any of that. So cool, thank yeah. you. Thank you again. You're welcome. Okay? Sure, but anytime. Thank you. Take you care. too.